Uh, so today we'd like to continue uh, our discussion about uh, inverse design uh, in photonics uh, by actually providing a, uh, a real example uh, of an optimization of a device uh, as enabled by uh, the edge-on variable method. So uh, just as a brief review, uh, as we have mentioned in the past several lectures, uh, in the inverse design, typically we would like to optimize uh, a objective function that tell us the intent of the design. So uh, for example, if we like to design a lens, uh, one way to imagine this objective function is just the intensity at a focal point, and you would like to make the intensity as large as possible for a given instant wave, uh, and that will, and if the instant wave is a plan wave, then tell you uh, something about focusing. So uh, the basic idea of the optimization uh, is to use uh, the gradient method. Uh, in this case, one uh, start uh, with a given structure uh, as uh, parameterized by uh, various variables describing, for example, the geome geometry or the dielectric constant of the system. Then one compute the gradient. In other words, how you are going to vary the structure in order to improve the structure performance. Uh, once you compute the gradient, uh, then you adjust the structural parameter along the gradient direction to improve the performance. And so uh, the key ingredient here is to compute the gradient. And as we have discussed in the last lecture, uh, there is a very efficient method called the edge method that allow you to compute the gradient of the objective function to arbitrarily large number of parameters in the system with only two simulations. And that uh, very significantly uh, speed up and in many ways enable uh, the optimization of these structures uh, uh, using the gradient method. So uh, here uh, in this lecture, we would like to give you uh, an example so that you can see how this actually works in practice. So uh, it's a, a relatively simple example. And uh, uh, what our goal here is to design a device uh, to focus light. So uh, imagine that we have a, so this is a two dimensional uh, simulation. So imagine that we have a point source as indicated by the green dot on the left here. And uh, uh, the objective here uh, is to uh, focus the emitted light from this point source as much as possible onto the orange point, the field monitor point on the right. And this is to be done by uh, try to put a device in between. Obviously, vacuum is not going to do it for you. And so what you like to do is put a device in the design region to achieve this focusing action. And, uh, uh, what, uh, and the device is then described by a permittivity distribution uh, inside the design region. So uh, in this case, our objective function would be the electric field intensity at the monitor point uh, as compared with the vacuum. And uh, uh, by optimize this objective function, we hope to come up with the right design. So uh, here is the starting point of the optimization. Uh, in this case, uh, we simply put a uh, dielectric slab between the source and the monitor. And here, we choose the permittivity to be uh, 1.625, which is halfway between one, which is vacuum, and 2.25, which is a, a reasonable value for glass. And as you can see uh, in the middle panel here, which shows the electric field distribution, uh, and the right panel here, which shows the intensity, uh, not surprisingly, this device does not focus at all. So uh, in the field distribution, for example, uh, in the middle here, uh, what you see uh, is simply a uh, cylindrical wave emitting from the point source and perhaps perturbed a little bit uh, by this uniform uh, dielectric slab. So uh, starting from this, what we would do 
is to adjust the permittivity inside the region as indicated by the rectangle here. And here is the optimization process shown in a movie uh, placed, uh, played repeatedly. So um, in this movie, what we show here on the left is the permittivity distribution for each iteration step. In the middle is the field distribution corresponding to each of the permittivity distribution. And on the right is the intensity distribution. So what you can see is that as we adjust the permittivity distribution inside the rectangle, very quickly, the field pattern start to go into this focusing behavior. And on the intensity distribution in particular, you very clearly see the focusing of light at the monitor point. And so uh, this shows you that with uh, this kind of method, you could actually just let the computer figure out what the optimum device configuration needs to be in order to achieve the functionality that you would like to achieve. Now, uh, let's go into a little bit uh, more details about how this optimization uh, is set up. So as I mentioned, the design region here is this rectangle between the source region and the monitor point. And uh, what we do is to break the design region into several hundreds of sub-wavelengths pixel and the relative permittivity of uh, the material at each of the pixel is then the parameter that we control. So there are a large number of independent parameters that we try to control in this optimization process. And the adjoint variable method then allow us to compute the gradient of the objective function to every one of these permittivity value uh, in a very efficient way. Now, uh, there are uh, quite a few, in fact, practical consideration in setting up these optimization uh, process. And uh, in subsequent lectures, we'll talk more about it. But here, I just want to comment on one aspect. So uh, one could, in the optimization, in the gradient calculation, compute the gradient to the permittivity and then update the structure based on this gradient. In doing so, however, there's no bound on the permittivity that you will be able to, will uh, in the end get in the optimization. Now in practice, uh, typically we only have a small range of permittivity to use. For example, if you, uh, are optimized based on a glass-based structure, then the maximum permittivity that you can get uh, is where the region is completely filled by glass, and that is one point, uh, that is 2.25. So uh, therefore, it would be good to have a method that automatically constrain the permittivity to be within a minimum value and a maximum value. Uh, to enable a structure that are more reasonable for implementation. So instead of directly computing the gradient to the permittivity, we constrain the permittivity between two uh, bounds to the minimum and maximum by having an extra parameter that map from P to the permittivity in the function as we do here. And then we compute the gradient with respect to P. So the advantage of this is that as you adjust the P value here for each of the pixel, the permittivity never go beyond these bounds and that allow you to constrain the permittivity within a certain range. So, uh, as I mentioned, then the with this, the basic 
optimization step then is very similar to what we have talked about, about permittivity optimization, except in this case, we compute the gradient, which is actually the P parameters, and then we do the update also in the space of the P parameters. And this enable us to constrain the actual permittivity to within the range inside the structure. So uh, here are some additional plots about the optimization process. On the left here, we show the objective function as a function of iteration. So as we iterate, the objective function are steadily improved. Now, if you recall, the objective function is the fuel intensity at the monitor point. So uh, this uh, give indication that the device uh, steadily improve its performance in terms of focusing. On the right, we show the norm of the gradient as a function of uh, iteration uh, step. So uh, as we further progress in the interaction, in the optimization in the iteration, the gradient gradually decays. And this is reasonable because we are uh, trying to approach a local optimum of the objective function. And as you approach the local optimum, you should expect that the gradient start to decrease. So uh, in fact, both of these parts give you an indication that the gradient optimization uh, process uh, is behaving exactly the way that we would expect them to behave. So uh, here, let me put out one more time how the final device look like. And on the right is the performance of the final device and you can clearly see the focusing of the intensity at the monitor point. And on the left, we show the dielectric structure that's generated by the computer. And uh, it has a very interesting shape. You can see a distinctive variation, uh, for example, along the y direction uh, of the permittivity. Uh, uh, and that's permittivity distribution is what enables the focusing. So um, it is in fact quite common that these optimization algorithms would produce structures that are rather counterintuitive. Uh, you can probably imagine why the structure behave, perhaps as a zone play in this case, but in general, these optimization algorithm tends to produce structures that uh, it's very hard to figure out why they work, but they actually uh, uh, do work, and in many cases work remarkably well. So uh, in this lecture, as a summary, we give you perhaps a first glimpse of how uh, the uh, gradient-based optimization as enabled by adjoint variable method actually works. And there are many details that we can discuss uh, further. Uh, one of the major thing here is to try to produce design to incorporate fabrication constraint. And this we have already touched upon a little bit. For example, uh, I have a talk about uh, a, a simple trick that enable you to pick the permittivity to be within certain range. And there are many other considerations that can be incorporated in the optimization process uh, by incorporating, for example, geometric constraint as well. And uh, also, uh, there are also a number of details about the optimization algorithm themselves that's important for improving the performance, the speed, and the stability uh, of the design process. And all these will be discussed in subsequent lectures. So uh, I'll stop here and thank you for your attention.